Okay, everybody, it's Bill. How you doing? You notice I've got this motor sitting here in front of us. Some of it has already been disassembled because we were doing the engine run tests on the other engine. So part of the work here is done. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to replace the heads, hopefully, depending on how much progress I make, and clean the block and clean everything and get it ready to be painted before putting you know the carburetor and the hoses and everything back onto it now for this part of the video I've got the two new heads I purchased if you look down at the bottom of these heads you notice there's no crack marks or anything if you recall and this is going to be kind of hard to see but if you recall I have rotten freeze plug there and then below that which you may actually be able to see if I can get the same in the right spot. Below that, there are some, and I'm missing it completely, aren't I? There it is. JB Weld. Um, one of these, you could see it through there, JB Weld on the heads. And this is not on the exhaust manifolds, so that's not going to hurt anything. Um, these tools that I'm going to be using today... Uh, purchased specifically for cleaning this and the uh, gasket surface edges of this and making sure that there's no rust or anything to inhibit their ability to seal properly. Those are being provided by Queen Cynthia from Queen Cynthia's Kingdom out that door in about 300 feet. Okay, she won't see this video, so I can get away with saying that without worrying about having to sleep in the doghouse tonight. <sighs> unless y'all tell on me so anyway all right i'm gonna go ahead and stop the video i'm gonna get everything ready and then i'll pick up um after i've gotten the exhaust manifolds off the valve covers off the distributor is coming off um then uh a few other little things that i'm going to be removing for access to that part of the head so basically i'm going to remove the top end and when I get that removed, I'll pick this video back up. See you in a little bit. Okay, I'm back again. Something I wanted to point out on this particular job is this alternator looks a whole lot like an old uh, Chrysler car alternator. And for all intents and purposes, it pretty much is. The thing is, for marine usage, you can't have an open alternator like this. You have to have a sealed alternator and the reason being because uh, volatile or, or, or you know explosive fumes can build up in the bilge of a of a craft because you have a sealed up area with the carburetor and all this stuff. You don't have the ventilation that you have under a car hood. So we have a blower fan that you're supposed to flick on for five minutes before you start your engine, and what that does is that's supposed to evacuate any latent fumes and stuff in the bilge and pull fresh air in well in the event that somebody forgets to do that these old type alternators could spark and because the fumes could get into here or into here or any of these places where there's contacts that are turning those fumes could be ignited by the spark and cause an explosion on the vessel so safety rules were changed to where we're no longer able to use this if the, in fact um, if I'm not mistaken if the Coast Guard finds you out with an old Chrysler boat and you got this old ass os alternate on it they may actually force you off the water or impound your boat I don't know which of the two is the most accurate but I've been told both scenarios okay so that's it for now as you can see I've got the exhaust manifolds off I've taken the belt off and I'm you know steadily working away I'll be back. Here we go again. Now I just pulled off one of the rear parts of the cooling system and I found a whole bunch of gunk in my cooler. Now it's probably not too bad, okay? Especially since the flow on this comes up through here and out. But now's a good time to remove that cooler and clean it out before getting the engine back together okay recording starting again now I've blown off the areas 
that were really crusty um, just to have less chance of stuff falling down into the uh, engine even though I'm probably gonna have to flush it as it is uh, I still want to try and you know mitigate it as much as possible now this piece here sat outside off of this manifold for a long time and the bottom side of it was really super rusty uh, when I got a hold of it so what I did was I sanded it down as best as I could and I gunked it real good not knowing how easy it was going to be to find another piece for that and I went ahead and I stuck it back on with a gasket the other motor the one that's on it is there it's in great shape it looks better it isn't rusty like this so when we go back that one's actually going to go on this um, and if I think about it at that time I'll show you the $160 thermostat that goes inside that big bad boy because it ain't like your regular car thermostat now I had told you guys and I tried to show you a little bit earlier in the video some of these uh, problems that this uh, engine had had and part of the reason I was doing the work I needed to do to it if you look here they have replaced freeze plugs in it uh, those aren't original but if you look below the freeze plug what you're gonna see is you're gonna see JB Weld now what happened there was that freeze plug probably popped at one time but there was still enough moisture down in this part of the water jacket that it swole up and cracked the block because there is a there is a water jacket there and then if you look back on this side you see a rusted out because it hadn't been replaced yet freeze plug and you see more of the uh, JB weld on there now if we go around to this side of the uh, engine again we have the same thing the front freeze plug has been done but there was freeze damage to the head and then we come back here to the back side and the back side freeze plug has been done but you can still see there was damage to the head now if you recall this this, this engine had four cylinders that were weak when I first started it up after those four cylinders ran etc etc we got the engine running ran it for a while if you recall in the previous videos the pressure came up on all of them except one um, so that one is why these heads would have gotten repaired had I not found a replacement set um, and a valve jobs and a new guide bars on these by the way I got these off of eBay um, I got them really reasonable I had to drive down and pick them up but I got them with no cracks and they've been going through within the past year you got about 10 hours on them and all I had to do was drive down into Kentucky so um, anyway that's all for now I'm gonna keep going okay. I'll be back um, now what I've done as you can see the intake manifold bolts are gone I removed the thermostat housing um, I've removed the rest of the rubber off of here I wanted to point out a couple of things the thermostat housing bolts I stuck back in their holes the carburetor mounting bolts I stuck back on their studs because sometimes as is in the case here these studs are fine thread I want you to look at this now you see it's a fine thread that's not a coarse thread like this so what happens is if you misplace these you can't just go grab one out of your toolbox or whatever if you have spares and throw them on and have them work it doesn't work like that now the bracket for the coil um, has an offset that you can see right here so I took and I put both bolts back into their respective holes for the coil on this particular engine I don't have to pull the distributor out to do the work I'm doing here the distributor is actually behind it so that's going to save me having to reset the ignition timing as far as the base um, 
I will later when I do the conversion to electronic, and, and I'll video that too, um, when I do the, the conversion to electronic ignition, then I will go back through the steps, step by step, what's going on. Anyway, so what I should be able to do now, when this shouldn't take a lot of pressure to do, even though it might because it's been sitting for so long, is I should be able to just catch some of this here real quick and have it pop up. Um, if it's been sitting too long, then that may not be the case because as you can see right there, the thing's really being pretty stubborn for me. So I'm going to get a little bit stronger thing than that to lift up on it with. And I'll be back. Okay, that's off. I just had to, a little bigger persuader. I look down in here, the engine doesn't look bad. Um, I can see a little varnish right here, but it's not much. And that's perfectly acceptable considering that the engine sat for 15 years. Um, but everything I look at along here shows me that things are pretty good inside this engine. Aside from the known issue with the water jackets. But if you look at that, oh, it's awful bright. But if you look at that... You know, there's not a bunch of sludge. Even down in the water jackets there, there's not a lot of rust or anything. You don't see a lot of goop in the uh, intake ports. I mean, all in all, you're looking at a, a pretty clean engine here. So that's good. I'm really glad to see that. The bottom by the distributor, if you notice over there, it's not gunked up. It's not junked up. Um... There's a little bit of moisture rust sitting there, if you look, and I'll move the thing so you can see it, and that will come out with time. Um, you know, there again, that's what I call that little bit of rusty varnish oil crap, because it just hasn't got hot enough recently for long enough to actually clean out all this crap that was in the motor so i mean all in all i'm very very happy with this part of it now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to remove the uh, valve covers and then i'm going to remove the rocker or the uh well i'll probably re remove the heads complete i probably won't bother pulling off the rocker arms but i, I will give them an inspection uh before i pop the head bolts loose see if i can see any that are overly high bent or otherwise all right, be back. Okay, here I go. Um, before I move these out of the way, um, I want to show you down inside these. These are very nice, very clean. Um, much better, actually, than I expected at first. And the reason I say at first is because, you remember, we have already looked down in the valley pan, in the valley of the engine, and in the valley, it was nice and clean. So I, I expected this really to be pretty clean. And I expected it to be what I see here. I don't see any bent push rods or off push rods. I don't see it over there. I don't see any of the rocker arms that are in some kind of weird position that they really shouldn't be in. So, because of that, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and move these here off to the side um, because I'll be cleaning them up later and getting the new gaskets on them and such and I'll take my uh, valve cover bolts and put this bag up and then we'll go ahead and pull the, the heads off and have a look at the cylinders okay I'm back for a moment here's an extra little thing to show you guys I put brand new plugs in this engine now granted a little bit of it's running rich and that's fine and dandy because we know there's some differences in compression um, but all in all I was very careful to take these plugs out before I remove the heads the reason being because for all intents and purposes they're brand new plugs I can run them on a soft buffing wheel like this and They'll, they'll be brand new still. They'll just be pretty and get what little bit of carbon's on them off. So, okay, you see, I'm, I'm getting ready to yank the heads themselves, and I'll be back. Okay, and by the way, just before I do this, you see this? This is an eye that normally hangs, the engine hangs from it. If you take this off of the back of a head or the front of a head, and it's bent like that in towards the center, 
somebody did something wrong. This thick steel, for Christ's sakes. <sighs> anyway, here's something so you'll know what to okay, look for. Here we go. Um, I. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because there's surely no reason to. Something had gone on with these heads where they've had new head gaskets put on them. And you could tell that the intake gaskets were recently replaced. Um, and then, of course, over on this side, let me set it so you can see it real quick. Alright, sorry about that. That's very poor and unprofessional. Um, you can see where they went in here and epoxy this. Um, now I've got one valve. You remember I had a weak cylinder got one valve that shows differentiation that no other valve shows now these two being the rear two heads the engine sits at an angle okay if you're looking at it and you see where it sits the engine sits at an angle these heads tend or these two cylinders tend to run a little rich at any kind of low rpm once you get going you know the vacuum and it'll even itself out but what I found here was this and because that looks so much different, I'm going to say that for some reason, that one is not sealing. Okay, and that's what was causing me to have, it's not sealing properly for whatever reason. And that's what was causing me to have the uh, other issue. Plus, if you notice, I see similar marks on this valve, but it's not. Oh, I have a phone call coming in. Be okay, right back. Sorry about that, my sweetheart called. Um... Now, I see a little bit of marking similar, but not the same. That's pretty even around the valve. This here is pretty even, you know. And even the back two are showing that they were running a little leaner than what we were getting on that side over there. So, um, I don't see any huge problems with the cylinders. The lip on the cylinder in here is very, very small. You can barely feel it, um, you know, for 1,300 hours on an engine almost 1400 hours that this engine had originally I don't know if that's if it's been repowered since then or not but for 1400 hours it's not bad I look over on this side you know and I got clean surface um, not seeing any indicators between the cylinders that there's a problem as you can see there there's no crack across there the holes are all nice and open. I don't see any plugged up holes. I do see where the leak was uh, previously, and that's fine. And then, uh, you know, I can come over here and I can wipe down the same same parts on this side, and I see the same thing. Uh, I will have to clean this, um, you know, so you guys, you guys will see here. I will clean this, and I'll clean and flush out the uh, cylinder walls, or cylinders as well. Um, to get any little pieces of stuff out of them so they don't act like sandpaper when we do finally start the engine back up so for right now i'm gonna go have lunch with my honey and i'll be back see ya